Hello once again, this is Jonathan Murr with the Hometown Historian Channel. It is gonna be a little loud here. We're only gonna spend a short period of time here because it's just, it's too loud. But uh, this is the Hanover Church. About two miles north is the site of this pioneer Presbyterian church founded in 1736. First pastor was Richard Sankey. In the graveyard are buried many first settlers and the veterans of frontier wars and the American Revolution. That is the old Presbyterian, the old Hanover Presbyterian Church. This sign right here that sheets uh, right at, I believe, 743 and 22. And uh, we're going to quick go north to uh, that graveyard. We're going to talk about it a little bit more about the old Hanover Church. Uh, so we're going to head out here and then we'll see you in a second over at the other place. Hey, we are here at old Hanover Presbyterian Churchyard. Uh, this it would be familiar from my first video Cliff brought me here Wasn't originally gonna film but then wound up filming here So really neat neat cemetery. There's a lot of really cool French and Indian War Revolutionary War era settlers and uh, veterans here, so we're just gonna talk about this a little bit just to add on to the uh, video here so I will video this so is that <coughs> <coughs> sorry about that I'm still not feeling terribly great uh Han Hanover Presbyterian Churchyard wall restoration within these walls lies the body of some of the first set settlers <coughs> of East Hanover Township Dauphin County Pennsylvania as well as veterans of the French and Indian War the Revolutionary War the War of 1812 and the Civil War this is Historic and hollow ground, please treat it with dignity and respect. And this has a number of the individuals that are responsible for this. And here it actually talks about the old Hanover or man at a Presbyterian churchyard established in 1736. And it's actually registered in Pennsylvania's inventory of historic places. And then it has in memory of the 44 veterans of the American Revolution, Revolution who lie buried here. I actually have a Colonel John Rogers is buried here, but I think that might be one of the guys that was involved with the Hanover Resolves. I sort of thought he was buried over a Dairy Presbyterian, the guy that was involved with that, but. I mean, it's a different John Rogers, but you can pause on that and uh, look at the different names. But yeah, this is uh, it's quite the place, quite a bit of history here. Uh, the church no longer exists and hasn't existed for quite a long period of time, but the cemetery is still here. Uh, it's here on, uh, I'm trying to think of the name of the road, but it's right off of a uh, 743 uh, just past uh, 81 where you have the entrance to get on to 81 I believe it would be 81 south and uh, but a lot of history here but uh, anyway so we're going to go to our next station and uh, we are going to uh, check out the Hanover results which I have quite a bit of information on that and uh, we'll uh, go from there thanks everybody all right so we are in the old Hanover churchyard a Presbyterian churchyard uh, one of the things that I was doing a video yesterday and some confusion on whether uh, Colonel John Rogers is buried here or not they do have him on the plaque he is actually buried over at the Derry Presbyterian churchyard why he's over there i'm not necessarily sure but he did this is where his family went to church so i guess they presumed that he was buried here but he isn't uh but he is on the plaque uh so that's where that confusion came from <coughs> one of the reasons i came in here is there's actually some pretty unique a unique individual in here his name's william clark we're going to try to find him so i'm going to look around here for a little bit and see if i can find him and if I can't, then I'll come back on and talk a little bit about him. Uh, but he's a pretty significant historical figure. And 
it's a shame that there isn't anything that you know it's a lot of these, these old cemeteries there's pretty significant people here but then you don't always know and I got excited there for a second because it was like William and I saw the C and I was like oh but his uh, name is William Clark so we're gonna look around the cemetery here I will quick show this one uh, because this is a pretty unique stone. They did, this is a newer stone because the original stone, I guess like treasure seekers, broke pieces off the old stone, but it's in memory of John and Isabel Craig killed by Indians, 1756. But so with that, we're gonna stop. I'm gonna look around and see if I can find the stone. And if I don't, I'll come back and then I'll tell you guys about him. Thanks everybody. All right, well, unfortunately, I did not find a marker for William Clark. Uh, he's actually a captain, and uh, I believe he served in Revolutionary War. Uh, one of the videos I'm going to be dropping today is, uh, I believe it's today, today or tomorrow, is on the Hanover Resolves, and one of the signers was a William Clark. Now this was not this individual, <coughs> William Clark is not him because uh, he would only been four months old when uh, cause he, I think he was born 1774, he died in 1851. And uh, he would have only been four years old at the signing of the, signing of the Hanover Resolve. So unless he was saying Goo Goo Gaga and was able to sign his name at that age, I doubt it, that uh, this was probably his son a relative of some form what makes this man very very unique is he actually was involved with several different offices that were quite high uh, for instance he served uh, first I think it was Pennsylvania so it had to do with the land and grant it was his first office then he served as the Pennsylvania State Treasurer uh, from 1821 I think to 1827 and then was the fourth United States Treasurer of the United States. Uh, now that's different from like Alexander Hamilton was the Secretary of the Treasurer or Treasury, and that's just as a that's a cabinet position, a different position entirely. But uh, he's the fourth uh, from 20, 1828 to 1829. He served underneath both uh, President uh, John Quincy Adams and Andrew Jackson. And then I believe shortly after that, he wound out running for the U.S. Uh, House of Representatives and served from, I think it was 33, 1833 to 1837. And after that, he pretty much uh, retired from public life and uh, wound out doing farming for the rest of his life. He is in here somewhere, but he's a pretty influential character. I mean, to have the fourth treasurer of the United States of America is buried somewhere in here. Uh, it's a shame you can't find the, the stone, but it is sort of what it is. I mean, a lot of these stones are a beautiful cemetery, but it is a lot of these stones are very hard to read, and a lot of them are broken off. Uh, so his, and on the find a grave they have a picture of him, which is how I was able to differentiate that this guy was something special. And then I read the account. Of who he was I thought at first they were talking about he was actually Secretary of the Treasury uh, but then the more I thought about it, I was like well Alexander Hamilton only served for the first six years of George Washington's cabinet or his uh, presidency and a lot of times those guys didn't last more than you know three four years and then there's another one and, and being that John Quincy Adams was the sixth president of the United States Andrew Jackson the seventh you know, being the fourth didn't make sense, but the head of the treasury is, uh, it's a little different. I guess you're actually involved directly with the treasury. That's, you know, your position. And uh, he, uh, the guy before him, I think served the longest term of anybody in the history of the country. He served like 26 years, which is why he was only the fourth, but Still pretty cool find. I was excited at first. I was like, wow, this guy, I found one of the guys that signed the Hanover Resolves. And then I looked at his age. I was like, yeah, he was born in February of 1774. He, uh, and that he wouldn't have served in, uh, he might have served in the War of 1812, actually. That would make a little bit more sense. Even that, I'm not sure. But I know 
they did say his rank was captain in the militia, I guess. So he wouldn't have been a Revolutionary War vet. So this, this would have been a hard one to find. But we're here at Old Hanover uh, Presbyterian Churchyard. And uh, really neat place, ton of history. It was cool to find another character from history. So I'm very happy about that and wanted to share that with you guys. So once again, we will see you guys on our next adventure and we will see you all about town.